Good afternoon. Welcome to the September 8th formal meeting minutes, formal meeting of the Phoenix City Council. Thank you for joining us. Will the clerk please call the order? Councilwoman Ansari. Here. Councilman DeCicio. Councilwoman Guardado. Here. Councilwoman O'Brien. Here. Councilwoman Pastor. Councilwoman Stark. Here. Councilman Waring. Here. Vice Mayor Garcia. Here. Mayor Gallego. Here. Thank you for joining us. Mario Barajas is here today to provide interpretation services. Mario, would you introduce yourself? Yes, Mayor. Thank you. Hello, my name is Mario Barajas. I will be serving as Spanish interpreter for today's City Council formal meeting. I will now take a moment to introduce myself to our Spanish-speaking audience. Muy buenas tardes a todos. Bienvenidos a la reunión formal del Consejo Municipal. Mi nombre es Mario Barajas y estaré sirviéndoles hoy como intérprete a los de habla hispana. Deseo pedirles de antemano, si es que van a dar un comentario público, por favor, hable despacio, con claridad y evite tener distracciones de fondo. Finalmente, pause después de cada uno o dos oraciones para que les pueda interpretar lo que esté diciendo de la manera más completa posible. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you so much, Mario. Will the city clerk please read the 24-hour paragraph? The titles of the following ordinance and resolution numbers on the agenda were available to the public at least 24 hours prior to this council meeting and therefore may be read by title or agenda item only. Ordinances number G6884 through 6891, S47905 through 47938, and resolutions 21953 through 21956. Thank you. Item number one is the meeting minutes from our May 6, 2020 meeting. Does anyone have a motion? Motion to approve. I have a minute to approve. <laughs> Second. Second. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please signal nay. A motion passes. Item number two is boards and commissions. Vice Mayor, do we have a motion? Uh, motion to approve Mayor and City Council boards and commissions nominations. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please signal nay. Passes unanimously. We next move to items three through 22 liquor license applications, noting that the city of Phoenix serves an advisory capacity to the state. Vice mayor, do we have a motion? Motion to approve items three through 21, noting that item 22 will be continued to September 15, 2021. Second. We have a motion and a second, any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Passes unanimously. We next move. Uh, City Clerk, are we ready for ordinances, resolutions, new business planning and zoning? Yes, Mayor. Vice Mayor, do we have a motion? Motion to approve items 23 through 74, except the following. Items 28, 29, 34, 46, 47, 49, 51, 56, and 72 through 74, and excluding these items for public comment, 28 and 63. Second. Do we have a motion from the vice mayor and a second from Councilwoman Stark? Any changes or additions? Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. DeCicio? Yes. Guardado? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Pastor? Pastor? Do you hear me? Yes. Thank you very much. Stark? 
Yes. Waring? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Gallego? Yes. Passes 9-0. We next move to a very important item, item 28, Vice Mayor, do we have a motion? Yes, really important, really excited to motion to approve uh, item 28. Second. Second. Thank you, we have a motion from the Vice Mayor and I think I heard Councilwoman Stark, although strong support for this particular item, the resolution to appoint the city manager. It is one of the most important votes that we take as an elected body, our next city manager will help lead us and the city of Phoenix into the future. And we have a very strong applicant in Jeff Barton. So very excited to move this one forward. Jeff Barton has given so much of his life to the city of Phoenix, has been experienced in helping us navigate through difficult financial times. He's helped us develop a strategic plan for navigating COVID-19 and supporting our community. Uh, we are grateful to his entire family uh, especially his wife, Danette, and uh, so excited to move this one forward. We're going to go ahead and begin with council member comments on this, and then we will go to comments from members of the public. Um, so we'll open it up to members, starting with Councilwoman Guardado. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, this one is very exciting. Um, Jeff, um, congratulations. I'm incredibly excited um, to be working with you. I think that um, your, your appointment to this position, being able to get you to lead the city um, moving forward after after in starting in October, I think it's a it's going to start a new era for for our city. Um, I think that one of the things that I think you and I spoke about um, was the fact having someone you know someone move, moving up. You started here as an auditor and you worked really hard to get to where you're at. I know that you were definitely essential uh, when I started as a new council member in understanding how the budget runs and how the city runs. I think um I I think you know I I learned a lot from you in the, in that process and I'm and I'm very thankful um to see all the great work that you're gonna that you're gonna continue to do for our city. Um, last year was a very harsh year, um and of course it's thanks to everyone um in the city manager's office, but I do think that. Thanks um, to the fact of the work that you've done for so many years, we we continue to have a resilient budget. We continue to be able to deliver a lot of amazing things for our constituents. Um, and I am again excited, happy to see you in this new role, and and see that people can look at you and know that they have hope um, if they work really hard that they someday can come. And be in the position that you're about about to start, and and to me that's exciting to see how we continue to promote um within the city of Phoenix. And if you come and you work here and you work really hard and you put your heart into the city, then you will then you will get somewhere. And I know that I've talked to a lot of people um that work that work for the city and are excited to see you be the next city manager, and that gives them hope to continue to be able to move up themselves. So that's very exciting. So. Once again, con congratulations. Thank you. Well said. Councilwoman Ansari. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm equally so, so, so thrilled um, to vote today to make uh, Jeff Barton the next city manager. Um, from the very first time I met Jeff, uh, I guess four or five months ago now, you know, it was very, very obvious the institutional knowledge that you have, your composure, your strategic approach to everything was just abundantly clear. Um, I recall very distinctly um, talking about the city budget as it was in the middle of the budget cycle and hearing about how we have a budget surplus, which obviously coming out of a pandemic, absolutely nobody expected. And I think that just goes to show how data driven you are. Um, you're a numbers guy and having that sort of knowledge um, coupled with your innovative approach and the fact that you're always willing to get your hands dirty and find a solution, I think is going to be really amazing for our city. Um, I'm also incredibly excited about the diversity that you're bringing and, you know, I think it's incredibly historic being the first black city manager um, and with such a diverse council that we have right now. Um, I think it's just phenomenal for our residents to be able to see this kind of diversity um, leading the city of Phoenix. So I'm really excited to work with you. Um, you know, you were the force behind developing the plan for how we um, move forward and implement American Rescue Plan dollars and that's going to be 
super important moving ahead. So congratulations. I hope you get to celebrate and I will be very thrilled to vote yes today. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Mayor, this is Councilwoman nice O'Brien. We'll go to the vice mayor and then Councilwoman O'Brien. Thank you, Mayor. Um, like the others, I'm really excited uh, for Jeff today for the city of Phoenix. I think, you know, you've dedicated 22 years of your life to this city um, and have come a long ways. Um, we should all be proud that you come from uh, HBCU um, and, and noting that you're the first uh, black city manager of this city is not just, yes, it's great for diversity, but it also, I want to acknowledge how hard it, it probably was for you, harder than it might be for others to rise and come to the place where you're at. You're expected perfection to be able to get to a place where you're at and you've given us perfection. And so it says a lot that the entire council is behind you and excited for you to um, take this new role. Um, I have full confidence that you will tackle the city's deep rooted issues head on. Um, and the one thing out of the many that I appreciate from you is that you speak truth. You let us know what's, what's good and what's not. Um, and we hope uh, that we continue to have this great relationship um, and, and really excited to, to vote for you today and excited for the influence that it's gonna have beyond the city of Phoenix and obviously to the residents of the city of Phoenix to be proud to have a strong uh, black city manager like yourself. So thank you so much, Jeff, and I'm excited to vote yes today. Thank you, Councilman O'Brien. Thank you, Mayor. So while I've only known Jeff since um, about January of this year, uh, I think that he is the epitome of a person who, you know, works hard and smart to achieve success. Um, in one of our chats, he's shared with me his childhood experiences and, and challenges of growing up in Pennsylvania, raised by his grandmother, who saw potential in him. And he has most certainly lived up to his potential. Um, since making Phoenix his home, Jeff has shown an outstanding ability to manage a multi-billion dollar operating budget and capital improvement budget for the fifth largest city in the nation. He's embraced innovation, evidenced by his use of COVID relief funds to implement new services or to enhance our existing programs that assist residents in need. And he certainly understands the importance of resident engagement and feedback, specifically when he championed Fund Phoenix, an online tool designed to educate and involve the public in the city's annual budget process. I personally appreciate Jeff's honest approach to the issues facing Phoenix. And when he fills the position of city manager next month, he's very much aware of the challenges he'll be walking into. But Jeff's tenacious nature pushes him to find solutions that benefits the majority. And I'm certain that he will face these challenges strategically and mindfully. And Jeff, judging by your predecessors, previous city managers who've come before, before you, including Ed Zerker, you have big shoes to fill. I bet I understand that you have an impressive sneakers collection, so I have no doubt that you're the right person for the job, and I'm excited to, put, to give you my full support and vote yes today. Mayor. Thank you. We'll go to Councilwoman Stark and then Councilman DeCicio. Thank you, Mayor. I don't know what else I can say. Everyone said so many wonderful things about Jeff, but I am very excited to support Jeff and his new position as city manager. I first met him when we were co-workers and I always admired his steadfast work ethic. I really learned a lot from him, I must tell you. We're really lucky to have such a smart and dedicated person like Jeff to lead our city and city staff. I personally think he's the right person for the job right now. And I'm very proud to say I second the motion. <laughs> Congratulations, Jeff. Thank you, Councilman DeCicio. Hi, Jeff. Look, I got to, everyone said everything about you, but the bottom line is your family's very proud of you. There's, to come where you've come from and you know, managing a household budget to now managing the fifth largest city in the country is just amazing. You're an example for so much of our youth. You've done so much in your life. The main thing about you, Jeff, is that you never give up. Your perseverance. You just never, ever give up. 
and that is why you are so successful at what you are. Uh, people like myself look at you and think, gosh, you know, we're in good hands when, we, when I look at you. Uh, and the fact is the, the work that you put together, a lot of people don't realize they see you as a numbers guy, but you're really an idea guy. I remember having a conversation with Ed. Oh, gosh, I think Ed was probably three or four years ago. And that's when I really got to know you. And I said, you got to let this guy release him. Just let him do what he has to do. Let him do it, <laughs> you know. And, you know, because you just had so many good ideas that were logical, that would work for the city of Phoenix. They were out of the box. Some of them were in the box. A lot of them were out of the box, things that you would take into consideration that no one else would think of. You're definitely the right person for the job. Uh, I don't think that that shows any color at all. It just shows that your strong abilities are why you got this job. You got it because you're the right guy for the right time. Uh, the next two years, I think, are going to be good times, and that's when your planning needs to come into play. Once these COVID dollars run dry, we're really going to be facing some walls, and it's going to be up to you, Jeff, to plan for what we're going to be seeing in the next three, five, seven, and ten years. God bless you and your family. Um, I just can't imagine how proud they are of you because of what you've been able to get done. Take care. Thank you. Councilman Jim Waring. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I appreciate it. Um, I, I did have some a couple different takes, but I also wanted to echo something that Sal said, if I had to sum up what he just said. You know, Jeff's a problem solver. I think that's critical for a position like this. Um, but for me, a, a couple of the other things, uh, he's hyper-responsive. Uh, you know, a lot of times I think, I don't want to speak for my colleagues, but I think you'll, you'll recognize this in my remarks. You know, we're not calling for ourselves. We're calling because a citizen needs something off times, and they want a, a quick response. I mean, your predecessor was phenomenal at that, and uh, I've always found you to be too, and I just wanted you to know I really appreciate that. I also, uh, from a perspective from a different job in the past, uh, having someone who's been the budget director, I, I would say going forward, you always want somebody who has had at least some of that experience. It's not that you've worked in every department, but those departments have had to come to you to explain what they're doing, why they're doing it, why it's important, how much money it is. I just don't think there's a better way to learn an organization than the experience you've had uh, in, in this last decade or so. And um, I just I just appreciate uh, our working relationship. Uh, you are the best person for the job. I, I, I had concerns that we'd be able to fill the void that was gonna be left when Ed Zerker left. And it's your day, so I won't belabor that, but you know, Ed has been phenomenal for us for I think eight years almost, uh, I think it'll be next month. And, uh, but I have every confidence you'll be able to fill his shoes. And that to my mind is high praise. I would also say uh, promoting you was one of the last great services that, uh, that Ed could have done for all of us because, and the city, because it put you in a position um, to be in a position to have this job, you know? Uh, and I, so that was uh, wisdom I think just right there, and I, I'm glad that we're going to have a chance to continue to work together. Congratulations. Thank you, Councilman. Do we have any additional comments before we go to members of the public who are here to testify? Mayor. Councilwoman Pastor. So, Jeff, I just want to say congratulations. Um, you have big shoes to fill, but I'm very confident that you will be you were mentored and groomed uh, for this position, and I am very confident that you will uh, lead in the same way of the past, but also bring in the future where innovation will come in. Uh, we have to think differently. Uh, we are in transition, and by being in transition, there's new ways of solving problems. Uh, as a budget director, uh, I have the most confident uh, of you being of you in the path of being the budget director because I know you'll keep the city moving forward. Uh, you're very conscientious about how money is spent. You're very conscientious about how uh, we spend taxpayer, uh, taxpayers' dollars 
and what in what programming and being able to demonstrate and put the benchmarks and performance marks where the measurements where are needed to uh, show our constituents in our city how we are running a very effective uh, city. Uh, you, you dig in, and that's what I like. You dig in to know what the constituent is feeling or experiencing. And you, on your own, will go through the path of what a constituent has gone through to see where the glitches are, to understand them, and then you fix them. And you fix it, it's not you that fixes it, it's your team that you bring together to fix the problem. You are a problem solver and that's what we need. But most importantly, you're trustworthy, you have integrity, and you're honest. And you're honest with the, with the council and you are willing to take the risk of telling us, no, you can't do that or no, here are the legal implications of doing that. You give us the different examples that are needed in order for us to make a decision. But I think what's at your heart is your family. And you are a family man who will take, have the boundaries around us in the sense of taking your boys to soccer, taking your daughter to school, and being there for your wife uh, in many different uh, occasions of uh, birthdays, anniversaries. You're very uh, conscious of that in order to keep your family intact and growing and moving forward in, in their life experiences and understanding their life experiences and what they're feeling. So congratulations once again, and thank you for serving. Thank you, Councilwoman. It's remarkable in this day that we've heard from all elected officials at the city of Phoenix in support of Jeff Barton. That gives me great hope for what you'll be able to accomplish, Jeff. We have a very diverse council with a lot of different political philosophies and that we are all coming together in this moment is really exciting one for the city of Phoenix. We uh, have many members of the public who wish to weigh in and we are gonna begin with a former colleague of ours, Councilman Noah Kowski. And then he will be followed by Rachel Aha, and our, our staff will call the rolls. So I will turn it to Councilman Nowakowski, former Councilman Nowakowski. Hello. Good afternoon. Mayor, thank you, Mayor. Well, Mayor, I thank you for allowing me to speak on support of Jeff Bartlett's um, nominee to um, becoming our city manager. You know, um, I had the privilege of serving under three different city managers from Frank Fairbanks to David Cavazos to um, Ed Zerker. And I just really wanna take this opportunity to thank Ed for all of his leadership and all those things that, all the programs that he allowed happen and all those crazy times in Levine with the cowbells and, and milking cows and all that. I mean, our city manager rolled up his sleeves and got dirty there. So thank you, Ed, for helping out in the community and being a part of the community and listening to the community. And I think that's exactly what we're going to get with um, Jeff, a person that has integrity, a person that believes in God, that believes in family, that believes in community. And I believe that's what makes him successful. And that's who Jeff is all about. It's about who he is as a human being, who he is as a father and a family member, and what role he plays in this great city of Phoenix. I remember the bad times that we had where we were looking at either actually laying off people and it was the team that um, Jeff was a part of that came up with some great ideas of how to keeping people hired, not laying people off, how cutting down some of the library hours, how um, we can keep the senior programs up and running, the after school programs and all that. And it took a lot of work. It took, a lot, it took that Team Phoenix approach to sit everyone together and figure it out. And it was sacrifice from all around, from our employees giving up some of their hours to all those sacrifices of our families that had to give up those library hours, those senior hours and all that. But we figured it out working together as a team. And I think that's what the type of leadership we have with um, Jeff. And I really like to thank Ed for allowing him to be that assistant manager and learning um, as he goes. So with that, 
Congratulations, Jeff, and, and God bless. Our next speaker is Rachel Aha, followed by Nathan Kabil. Rachel, are you on the line? Hello, I'm here. Uh, Rachel Aha with Cox Communications. Uh, as a resident and a member of the business community, I have had the opportunity to work with Jeff on a number of occasions, uh, and I'm just calling in to support his appointment. Uh, he has always been well prepared and willing to answer any questions that I had throughout the process, and I really look forward to working with him in his new role. Thank you. Our next speaker is Nathan Kabil, followed by Jason Kalaman. Nathan, are you on the line? Nathan is not on the line. Our next speaker is Jason Kalaman, followed by uh, Carol Chapman. Jason, are you on the line? Jason is not on the line. Our next speaker is Carol uh, Chapman, followed by Carol Coles Henry. Uh, Carolyn, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Oh, uh, we can hear you and you may proceed. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Thank you for your wise, timely, superb choice of Jeff Barton as the next Phoenix City Manager. You have related your firsthand knowledge and you are the firsthand eyewitnesses of Jeff's stellar performance and his stellar results and his exceptional ability to get the job done with excellence, professionalism, integrity, ingenuity, and class in spite of a recession, the pandemic, all manner of upheaval, politics, and a lot of crazy. Phoenix needs a professional, nimble, resourceful city manager who can hit the ground running, not miss a beat, not lose any ground in transition, and deliver the highest and best for you, the city employees, and most importantly, for all of us Phoenix residents. You have rightly and wisely chosen that leader in Jeff Barton. Thank you and congratulations, Jeff. Our next speaker is Carol Coles Henry followed by Victoria uh, Elizalde. Uh, Carol, are you online? Yes, I'm here. Uh, we can, can you hear, hear me? Oh yeah, yes we can, you may oh. proceed. Okay, thank you. Well, it's an honor and a privilege to make remarks today in support of Mr. Barton's historic appointment, Mayor and City Council, Vice, Vice Mayor, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and City Council. Your intentions to appoint Mr. Barton as the next Phoenix City Manager is greatly valued and appreciated. I had the opportunity to work with him during my tenure in Phoenix City government. His more than 20 year stellar municipal government career and his public service excellence makes him the perfect candidate to lead the fifth largest city in the country into the future. His leadership, ethics, integrity, reputation, sound judgment, steadfast commitment to building models of success, exemplary stewardship of city and community resources, professionalism, and commitment to fairness and equity are noteworthy. He's always available and accessible. Mr. Barton is a visionary for a time such as this. Without hesitation and with great honor, I wholeheartedly recommend him as the next Phoenix City Manager. Jeff is also from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania where we pursue our happiness. Jeff, we are so proud of you and God bless you. Thank you, Mayor and City Council. Our next speaker is Victoria Elizalde, followed by Annie Ender. Uh, Victoria, are you on the line? Yes. I'm here. Uh, we can hear you and you may proceed. Good afternoon, Mayor and City Council. My name is Victoria Elizalde. Um, I am a resident of District 7 and the Assistant Director of DFAP, a youth program in the City of Phoenix. I have had the pleasure of meeting with Jeff several times during budget hearings over the years, which I have attended to advocate for youth programs, sports, parks and after school programs for underserved kids. 
Jeff had always took the time to learn more about the needs of the kids in the community. He was engaged, approachable, and always had a great attitude. He became a familiar face and someone the community could trust to ensure the city's budget supported many of the youth programs, especially in underserved areas. Jeff is a great example of someone who overcame adversity through his firsthand experiences, and he serves as a role model for our youth. I know that as a city manager, he will lead with compassion and understanding in every decision he makes to help make Phoenix a better place to live for all families. Um, I just wanted to thank you guys for your time and best of luck, Jeff. Thank you. Our next speaker is Annie Ender, followed by Dr. Ann Hart. Annie, are you on the line? Uh, can you hear us, Annie? Oh, uh, no audio, Annie. Can I hear? Can you hear me okay now? Oh, uh, yes, we can, and you may proceed. Apologies, uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council Members. On behalf of many neighborhoods and communities citywide, we respectfully request unanimous approval to appoint Assistant Manager Jeff Barton as City Manager upon City Manager Ed Zucker's retirement. We will most certainly miss working with Mr. Zucker and are grateful for the interactions with him over the years. He's been extraordinarily kind and fair and he has served the city well. We believe Mr. Barton is truly the best choice to follow Mr. Zucker's le legacy and yet establish practices he adeptly applies to his current duties. Mr. Barton masterfully created the 2021-22 annual budget and managed the process to adoption. And throughout those public meetings, he handled it so well, so professionally, and focused on the facts while keeping an open mind to the many suggestions offered. Clearly, the best interests of the city of Phoenix are his priority, and we are grateful for you to appoint them, and we're looking forward to working with him. Thank you. Our next speaker is Dr. Ann Hart, followed by Kurt Mangum. Dr. Hart, are you on the line? Uh, Dr. Hart, can you hear us? Uh, you have no audio, Dr. Hart, if you can hear us. Uh, Dr. Hart, we cannot hear you, so our next speaker is Kurt Mangum, followed by Luz Rodriguez. Kurt, are you on the line? Yes, I'm on the line. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can, and you may proceed. Well, thank you. Mayor Gallego, Vice Mayor Garcia, and Honorable City Council members, I just want to thank you for your decisiveness uh, in the selection of Assistant City Manager Jeff Barton. Um, I will not repeat all the many accolades and highlights of his accomplishments. I'd just like to simply say that I support your decision and we support Mr. Barton 100%. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Luz Rodriguez, followed by Stephanie Ramiro. Luz, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Uh, we can hear you and you may proceed. Okay, good afternoon, Marin City Council. My name is Luce Rodriguez and I'm a resident of District 1. Uh, I'm calling to express my support for Jeff Barton. I had the pleasure to work with Jeff in the past and I was always very impressed with his depth knowledge of the city of Phoenix as an organization and his passion to serve the public. Um, Jeff, like you guys said yourself, has had over two decades of city experience and a track record that has proven results. He has demonstrated time and time again, he can handle complicated issues such as co the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, he has been an outstanding steward of the city's budget for years, which has maintained the city in good financial health. And I commend the city council for choosing to appoint Jeff as uh, our new city manager, and I'm super excited and proud to see someone lead the fifth largest city in this country who represents communities of color. Best of luck, Jeff. I know the city will be in great good hands. Thank you, Mayor. 
Our next speaker is Stephanie Ramiro, followed by Loriandra Van Her. Stephanie, are you on the line? I am. Uh, we can hear you and you may proceed. Thank you. Hello, Mayor and Council members. My name is Stephanie Romero, and I currently live in District 8. I'm a native of Phoenix, and I've spent the last 14 years working in government communications, with the majority of my career as a PIO in Phoenix. I was absolutely thrilled to hear the news that the Phoenix City Council will appoint Mr. Jeff Barton as the next city manager. He has all of the qualities you would want as a leader of the fifth largest city in the nation. He's brilliant. He's engaged. He's professional. He's kind. He keeps it real. Employees and community leaders respect and like him. Plus, he's a hard worker with a humble background, and I'm extremely confident he'll do an excellent job. Phoenix will always be my home and will always have my heart. I'm excited for Phoenix residents and employees to have a city manager who's worked at several levels of the organization and knows it inside and out. Mr. Barton is ready to hit the ground running and lead the city into the future. I fully support and I'm grateful for the council's decision to appoint Jeff Barton as the next city manager. Best of luck and congratulations to Jeff and to Ed as well. Thank you. Our next speaker is Loriandra Van Her, followed by Aaron Wilson. Loriandra, are you on the line? Yes, good afternoon, Mayor and members of the City Council. My name is Lori Van Heron. I'm a fifth generation Arizona and Arizonan and a former City of Phoenix employee. I'm speaking in support of this motion. I worked for the city for seven years and first saw Mr. Barton speak when he was the budget and research director. Jeff spoke about his incredibly inspirational story, and I was struck by his dedication to his family and his incredible work ethic. And although he has um, terrible taste in sports teams, uh, I found him to later when I worked with him to be honest uh, and straightforward without regard to politics or personal agenda. He clearly cares very deeply about our employees and the community. He led the city through the past 19 months in our budget uh, when we were terrified of losing our jobs and he was able to prevent mass uh, cuts and layoffs. I want to congratulate Ed and his uh, incredible job uh, in leading the city, and I hope that he has a wonderful retirement, enjoys this respite, and I'm super excited for Jeff and, and super excited for the city and want to congratulate him as well. Thank you. Our next speaker is Aaron Wilson. Aaron, are you on the line? Yes, can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can. You may proceed. Yes, I am. Okay. Thank you, Mayor and Council members. Uh, I support Jeff Barton as our next city manager. He has been and is a leader. He is a proud graduate of Morehouse College. He has been dedicated to the city of Phoenix for 22 years. His strategic fiscal policies sustained us during the pandemic, this pandemic. In every job he has had, he has worked with the mindset to serve in the best interest of the city. He makes decisions based on facts and data, Yet he is a man of the community and operates with compassion. I strongly believe he will continue to strengthen our city's brand, grow our economy, and make Phoenix the number one place for families to live. Frankly, with his qualifications, we are blessed to have Jeff Barton as a leader of our city. Mr. Barton definitely should be our next city manager. Congratulations. Thank you. Mayor, that was our final speaker on this item. Thank you so much. Thank you to all members of the public who called in on this item, as well as the council members who provided wonderful comments. I will now call for a roll call on the appointment of Jeff Barton as city manager for Phoenix. I'm sorry. Yes. Decisio. Yes. Guardado. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark? Heck, yes. <laughs> Waring? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Gallego? Yes. Passes 9-0. By unanimous vote of the Phoenix City Council, Jeff Barton is the next city manager for the city of Phoenix. Congratulations, Jeff. I will turn, for you, turn to you for comments. Mayor, Mayor, members of the council, first, 
Um, most of you who know me know I don't like a lot of fanfare and attention. So, <laughs> so this, is, this is a little difficult for me, but um, I'm going to get through it. So first, let me thank you for this un unbelievable opportunity. I am more than humbled by your belief and your confidence in my ability to lead this amazing organization with dedicated employees that provide incredible services to over 1.7 million residents each and every day. I also want to thank my support team, which includes my wife and children, my family, my extended family, my City of Phoenix family, and the list of mentors and friends that I've been blessed to have learned through, from throughout my career, including the big guy ne next to me on the right. Um, he's been nothing but a fan and encouraged me my entire career ever since we first met when he was transit director. I also want to publicly acknowledge my guardian angel, who I lost three years ago. That, that's my grandmother, Rachel Barton, who saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. Um, my career, I, I've taken pride in honesty, integrity, accountability, transparency, and responsiveness. My intent is that this organization will commit to the same principles while we enhance our commitment, dedication, and connection to the community. Now, I, have, I would be remiss if I didn't recognize the importance of today from a historical perspective. Being city manager is not something that I take lightly, nor did I take the decision to accept this appointment lightly. And so what I would like to do is, is share with you something that I kept going back to as I was making this decision. And this is a little bit against my, this is rubbing my wife's nose in a little bit because, you know, my wife went to Spelman, I went to Morehouse, and there's always this, this competition and pride. But Dr. Elijah Mays, uh, Benjamin Elijah Mays, was a president of Morehouse College. He was also Martin Luther King's mentor, and he read the eulogy at Martin Luther King's funeral. He gave a, a speech, commencement speech, to Morehouse College way back in the day. And this is something that has always driven me, and it's also what I think got me to here today. And I want to read an excerpt of that speech. Dr. Mays said there's an air of expectancy at Morehouse College. He said it's expected that the student who enters here will do well. It's also expected that once a man bears the insignia of a Morehouse graduate, that he will do exceptionally well. We expect nothing less. May you perform so well that when a man is needed for an important job in your field, your work will be so impressive that the Committee of Selection will be compelled to examine your credentials. May you, stand, may you forever stand for something noble and high. This is kind of what has inspired me throughout my career, besides my family and my grandmother. So I stand before you today. I want to give thanks to Morehouse College as well. But I stand before you today ready to work, ready to roll up my sleeves. And I am incredibly humbled to you. And I give my dedication and commitment to the community of Phoenix that we will get better and we will run like you've never seen us run before. Thank you. Well said and congratulations. We look forward to the official transition date of October 8th and thank you for accepting this important position. Thank you to our city manager, Ed Zerker, for all he has done to bring us to this day in his work as well. We next move to item 29, which is some of the details of the contract. Vice Mayor, do we have a motion? Yes, uh, now we gotta get Jeff paid. So we'll motion to approve item 29. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. Tosicio. Yes. Guardado. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Let's go wearing. Yes. Stark. <laughs> yes. Waring? No. Garcia? Yes. Gallego? Yes. Passes 8-1. We next move to item 34, which is the audio video equipment contract. Vice Mayor, do we have a motion? <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> Councilwoman <laughs> Bestor made me, made me smile a little. Um, uh, motion to approve item 34. Second. Any comments? Roll call. Ansari? Yes. Decisio? Yes. Guardado? Yes. 
O'Brien? Yes. Pastor? Yes. Stark? I apologize. Stark? Yes. Thank you. Waring? No. Garcia? Yes. Gallego? Yes. Passes 8-1. We next move to item 46, which is related to our Phoenix Resilient Food System Program. I'll turn to Councilwoman Ansari. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to take an opportunity to highlight the incredible work of the Office of Environmental Programs, especially Roseanne Albright, um, who, along with community input, has put together a really innovative plan to strengthen our local food system. What's cool about this program is that it touches everyone, farmers, local and small business owners, and helps feed our most vulnerable residents. We know that the pandemic um, shined a light on our urgent need to help protect our food systems. And we can all remember when our supply chains were crumbling, our local our grocery stores, um, we couldn't find any food and local farmers are the ones who actually stepped up to help feed us. The Feed Pro Phoenix program was incredibly successful, and then we know that we have many challenges ahead to address food deserts in our district, um, in our city, especially in my district. This program's focus on backyard gardens, farmland preservation, and food entrepreneurship will be key to building a sustainable future. And we're not being shy about who needs that support. It's Black, Indigenous, and people of color. We're thinking about our water usage. This is a mouthful, um, but water efficient aquaponic gardens where residents can grow fish and shrimp are also part of a part of this program. And I think that's really awesome. As we work on solutions for many local farmers, it's already too late. Abbey Lee Farms on Baseline Road, which is located in District 7, has already moved to Flagstaff, although they continue to feed Phoenix residents. Crooked Sky Farms on 27th Avenue and Lower Buckeye Road is also running out of time. We need to remember that most farmers don't actually own their land and all levels of government haven't acted on the solutions to this problem for many, many years. We're the fifth largest and fastest growing city in the US and we're building new homes faster than ever. We cannot let food resiliency be an afterthought. I'm so proud to be able to vote on this today um, and I really want to give a major shout out to the folks who have been leading this effort at the city of Phoenix and I look forward to supporting future items like this one as well. So with that, I motion to approve item 46. Second. We have a motion and a second from the vice mayor. Vice mayor. Thank you, mayor. Just also really excited for this item. Um, it'll be something that's greatly going to impact district Eight. really excited for the collaboration with the Tiger Mountain Foundation. Um, they do incredible work in District 8, and so really excited. Same shout out to Roseanne and on the whole team for doing great work. We'll be voting yes on this. Thank you. Any additional comments? Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. Tosicio. Yes. Guardado. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Yes. Waring. Yes. Garcia. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Passes nine zero. We next move to item forty seven, which is an agreement with the Department of Education. Arizona Department of Education for College Depot Laptop Wi-Fi Hotspot Lending Program. I'll turn to Councilwoman Ansari for comments. I believe it's Councilwoman. I'm sorry, Councilwoman. Did I say Councilwoman O'Brien? I'm sorry, Councilwoman O'Brien. Thank you. No, no. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as I said in our last formal meeting, College Depot is an amazing program which works with families and students to aid them through the post-secondary education application and funding process. Originally, the program was only available in person and only at the Burton Bar Public Library. When the worldwide health crisis hit and public spaces began closing down, College Depot pivoted by introducing a pilot program to check out hotspots and laptops to students in need for their virtual classes. 
by helping to close the digital divide, College Depot ensured current high school students and adults seeking their GED could continue to better their futures. Using money from the Arizona Department of Education, this item will allow College Depot to purchase an additional 425 laptops and 200 Wi-Fi hotspots to expand their program and close the digital divide by doubling the number of students who will be able to connect with their teachers and their peers. I'm a firm believer that education is the gateway to a better, more prosperous future. Post-secondary education can take more, many forms from universities to trade schools to apprenticeships. I look forward to working with College Depot in the future to expand access to all forms of post-secondary attainment. And with that, I would like to make a motion to approve item number 47. Second. A motion from Councilman O'Brien and a second from Councilwoman Stark. Thank you both. Very excited to see this item move forward. Superintendent Hoffman's office received CARES Act dollars from the federal government and then uh, subsequent pieces of legislation. Uh, she went out to cities and the mayor's education roundtable and asked for innovative ideas about how to help students during the global pandemic. Uh, was excited to work with our library who immediately came up with this idea related to College Depot and Wi-Fi hotspots. Thank you to Rita, Ham Rita Hamilton and her team for working with us on this application. And thank you to Superintendent Hoffman for awarding it. Uh, I've already gotten to meet with several students who were able to apply to college thanks to this program and we will continue to extend its reach. Uh, this council approved additional hiring for College Depot and if you're looking for a cool job, uh, there will be a, a job posted soon for College Depot. So if you know anyone who wants to help Phoenix build our future, this is a great way to do it. We know from data from ASU Helios and others that helping students apply and complete the FAFSA is a huge indicator of increasing college going and we have ambitious goals in the state to increase the amount of students who go to college and complete a four year degree, as well as those who find um, their career pathways elsewhere. This is a very exciting opportunity for the city of Phoenix and really appreciate the partnership with the state of Arizona and the federal government. Connectivity is so important. Looking forward to supporting this item. Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. Decisio. Yes. Guardado. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Yes. Waring. Yes. Garcia. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Passes 9-0. We next move to item 49, which is related to golf merchandise. Vice Mayor, do we have a motion? Motion to approve item 49. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any comments? Roll call. Ansari. Yes. Decisio. Yes. Guardado. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Yes. Waring. No. Garcia. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Passes 8-1. We next move to item 51, which is related to the Tempe Union School District. Councilwoman O'Brien, do you have a motion? I move to approve item 51. Second. Motion and a second. Any comments? Roll call. Ansari. Yes. Decisio. Yes. Guardado. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Pastor. Stark. Yes. Waring. Yes. Garcia? No. Gallego? Yes. Passes 8-1. Next is 56 Citywide Construction Project Management Information Services. Vice Mayor, do we have a motion? Motion to approve item 56. 
Second. Thanks to our city engineer and others who are moving this one forward. Any comments? Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. Decisio? Yes. Guardado? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Pastor? Yes. Stark? Yes. Waring? No. Garcia? Yes. Gallego? Yes. Passes 8 1. We next move to item 63, which is a final plat in District 7. I will turn to Councilwoman Ansari for a motion. I move to approve item 63. Second. We have a motion and a second. We do have one member of the public to address the council, so we will go to the phones for Mark Rodriguez. That's for Mark Rodriguez. Hello, Mayor Kate Gallego and Konnichiwa and everybody at the PC, PHXT C City Council. How are you doing this afternoon? We're doing great, Mark. We're doing great, Mark. Good grief, Mayor Kate Gallego. I'm just referencing to penis like Charlie Brown and Snoopy and Charles Schultz, even though rest in peace to Charles Schultz. But anyway, I'm here for the 19th Avenue and Baseline that I go to that McDonald's and that Burger King, Goodwill and all that stuff. And you're building like everything and all that stuff. And also, Mayor Kate Gallego, I don't know if you're a fan of the penis, but I love the penis back then because I was thinking about cartoons and all that because I can't get it on my head. And also, I'll give you a shout out to Yasmin Asari, Carlos Garcia, Ann O'Brien, Deborah Stark, Laura Pastor, Betty Wangato, Jim Waring, Shout to CCO, which I'm not a fan of that guy, but hey, it is what it is. But it's all good to you, Mayor, because I love to see you guys again. I, especially you, Mayor Kick Guy. I want to see you in person one of these days because I want to see you so badly because I like to talk Japanese and all that stuff because I love Japan and all that because even though you're trying to do like all the cities and all that stuff because, and all that stuff, because I'm just a fan of you guys, except Sal, but it's all good what it is. And anyways, have a great day. And also Mayor Kate Gallego, blinded by the light, ran up like a deuce and then a roller in the night. It's a song reference. Bye. Thank you for your testimony. Any comments? Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. Decisio? Yes. Guardado? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Pastor? Yes. Stark? Yes. Waring? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Gallego? Passes nine zero. Woohoo! We next go to items seventy two and seventy four, which are related items concerning the co southeast corner of thirty fifth Avenue and I ten. Um, we will hear them together. Uh, we do not have any members of the public to testify. We'll begin with a brief staff report and then a very short public hearing. Thank you, Mayor. And members. I will introduce our Planning and Development Director, Alan Stevenson. Thank you, Mayor, members of Council. I, item 72 and 73, as you noted, are related cases. Uh, the first one, item 72, is a general plan amendment uh, that both deal with the uh, same corner at the southeast corner of 35th Avenue and Interstate 10. Item 72 is the general plan amendment. Staff requests approval of a resolution to change the general plan land use designation from public, public quasi public to mixed use to allow a commercial and multifamily project. Uh, this uh, case was approved by the Australia Village Planning Committee on a seven to zero vote, and the Planning Commission also approved it by a seven to zero vote. The related case, which is the rezoning of that same site, uh, is uh, um, a request from R16 to C2 and um, R4A to allow for the multifamily residential development and commercial uses, including a convenience store with a fuel station. Uh, this request was approved by the Australia Village Planning Committee uh, by a 7-0 to zero vote and the Planning Commission uh, also by a 7-0 to zero vote. 
Uh, there is no members, uh, no one in the public is in opposition to that, and with that, staff is happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Do any members of the council have any questions for staff? Seeing none, we will go ahead and open a public hearing. Uh, we do not have any members of the public to testify at the hearing, so we will close the public hearing. This item is in Council District 4, so I will turn to Councilwoman Pastor. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to thank staff and uh, those that have been actively involved in on 35th Avenue and in State 10. This is the area where it was an old Marine Army uh, center that has been blighted for, I would say, the last eight, 10 years. And uh, we have been working uh, really hard with the community as to see, as to wanting to see what would, uh, what they would like to see. We've had many community meetings. And uh, the great thing about this project is the possibility, or the, well, not possibility, what will happen is uh, there will be a QT in the front and then with QT uh, assisting and building affordable housing. In particular, we would like to build it for our veterans. And so uh, this is a, a unique, innovative project uh, that I, I was able to work on with uh, the community and uh, QT on making this happen. So really appreciate it and very supportive. Thank you, Councilwoman. Do we have a motion? I move, let me see. I move to approve per planning commission's recommendation and adopted the re related resolution. Second. And ordinance. Thank you. Right? Any... Yep, resolution was perfect for this one. Okay. Any comments? Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. Decisio? Yes. Guardado? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Pastor? Yes. Stark? Yes. I apologize. Stark? Yes. Thank you. Waring? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Gallego. Yes. Passes 9 0. Woohoo! Let's continue the streak. Item 73. Councilwoman Pastor, do you have a motion? Yes. A motion to approve per Planning Commission recommendation and adopt the related ordinance. Second. Any comments? Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. Decisio? Yes. Guardado? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Pastor? Yes. Stark? Yes. Waring? Yes. Garcia? Woo! Yes. Gallego? Yes. Passes 9 0. Awesome. Thank you. We next go to item 74, which is related to the downtown code density map, alley map, and Townsend Park character area. We'll begin with a brief staff report. Thank you, Mayor, members of Council. This is a text amendment to amend three portions of the downtown code related to the density map, the buffer alley map, and the Townsend Park character area development standards. Uh, they all are related for a parcel that is 160 feet south of the southeast corner of 3rd Street and McDowell Road. For those of you that are food aficionados, it's just south of the Taco Bell at McDowell and 3rd Street. Uh, the intent of the proposed text amendment is to address the density map to increase the allowable density on the parcel from a maximum of 43.5 dwelling units per acre to 125 dwelling units per acre to amend the regulating maps. Uh, for buffer alleys to remove the buffer alley designation within the area between those uh, third and fifth street for the subject site 
and within the, the area between Willetta Street and McDowell Road, and also to amend the Towns and Park character uh, area to allow a height density bonus or height bonus up to 30% for the sustainability bonus points that are already contained within the downtown code. The Central City Village Planning Committee uh, approved this request 10 to 1. The Planning Commission approved the request 7 to 0. And with that, staff is happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions? Mayor, just one. Please go ahead, Councilwoman. Really, Alan? Taco Bell? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, we're on Mayor. a roll, I thought we would keep going. <laughs> Yeah, if you have a meeting with Alan, maybe don't do a lunch meeting. I don't know. Um, it is a wonderful area and um, exciting, uh, wonderful, great. The Townsend Park community have been great partners for us at the city. All right, we will open the public hearing. We do not have any members of the public here to testify. We will close the public hearing. This is in District 8. Vice Mayor, do you have a motion? Yes, I motion to approve per planning commission's recommendation and adopt the related ordinance. Second. Motion and a second. Any final comments? Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. Decisio. Yes. Guardado. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Pastor. Stark? Yes. Waring? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Gallego? Yes. Passes 9 0. That is our final agendized item of the day. We will now go to public comments and I will turn to our city attorney to introduce this portion of the council meeting. Thank you, Mayor. During citizen comment, members of the public may address the City Council for up to three minutes on issues of interest or concern to them. The Arizona Open Meeting Law permits the City Council to listen to the comments, but prohibits Council members from discussing or acting on the matters presented. Thank you. Uh, we will now ask our staff to call the members of the public who are here, be uh, beginning with Ari Barong Huber. Okay. Uh, we're getting some okay. feedback on your end, Ari. Oh, I'm sorry about that, my friend. So, um, good afternoon, uh, members of the Phoenix City Council. My name's Ari, and I've worked for HMS Host for about six months now uh, as a host in uh, Barrio Cafe at Terminal 4. Um, we've repeatedly come to the City Council to talk about uh, how we face an elevated risk of COVID while serving the traveling public at Phoenix Sky Harbor, uh, and that we're constantly understaffed. We still do not believe that the company is handling itself appropriately. Um, in my position, I'm often expected to do the work of two or three people by myself. Um, this means doing to-go orders, feeding guests, restocking the front of house, um, uh, uh, you know, multiple jobs that really should have multiple people for it. Um, and again, I'm, I'm alone for seven to eight hours of every shift by myself. And of course, when things go wrong, um, you know, these conditions aren't really recognized. It's generally the staff itself, the understaffed staff who takes the blame for these issues. Um, you know, whether it's been us talking about workers, talking about discrimination, understaffing, safety or healthcare issues with an HMS host, we've waited for the council to act. And unfortunately, the issues have not been resolved. So we ask this council to believe workers and not continue rewarding HMS hosts at our uh, airport. Thank you so much for your time. Our next speaker is Annie Ender, followed by John Forsythe. Annie, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can, and you may proceed. Um, thank you very much. Once again, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council Members, Ann Ender, I'm the President of Operation Blue Ribbon. I'm a Navy wife and an Army mother. Earlier today, during the Public Safety and Justice Subcommittee meeting, Executive Chief Kurtenbach and Assistant Chief Conley delivered an insightful yet troubling presentation regarding the retention, recruitment, and hiring efforts of the police department. Um, clearly, the sworn civilian vacancies, sworn and civilian vacancies, are at a critical level. 
Um, the chiefs identified uh, different avenues for which they do the recruiting and the military was discussed as part of that. And that has traditionally been a positive conduit for a recruitment. Sadly, <laughs> Councilwoman Ansari commented about some research that she had read that recruitment from the military is negative, that it has a, a, a negative impact. Um, they have a culture to fight versus a culture to protect and was asking that emphasis be put on the universities, community colleges as preferred method of recruitment. And then she ended it with, by saying, with all due respect to veterans. Well, there is no respect in that comment to any veteran. And most important, this comment just added another layer of difficulty for the police department's recruiting efforts. So I did a little research and actually found evidence that a uh, 2020 um, study that was done shows that military uh, folks with military backgrounds that actually go in the police department are less likely to have civilian complaints. They have a positive perception of what their job is and their ability to connect with the community. So with all that said, maybe perhaps the reason that it's difficult for the Phoenix Police Department to recruit is not because of these things, but because of the of short sighted comments such as that. Last, um, I'm hoping that my organization, Operation Blue Ribbon, can partner with Phoenix Police Department to um, during our events to make sure that a, a part of that will always have a recruitment effort um, available. Thank you. Our next speaker is John Forsyth, followed by Gia Gabba. John, are you on the line? Yes, I am. We can hear you and you may proceed. Thank you. Um, Mayor and Council, I hate to bring storm clouds to the end of this meeting. My name is John Forsyth. I'm here today to petition my government for a redress of grievances. Mayor, you and Chief Williams have not answered my mailed in comments, so I'm here today. The Phoenix. The Phoenix Police Department is, in my opinion, out of control. They are literally black and blue. Whether it's the coins, the DOJ are refusing to follow the people's laws, they have no accountability nor ethics. I cannot fathom how a law enforcement agency refuses to follow the law of the people. It would be funny if it was not ironic. How can police demand respect when they fail to respect the laws of the people? When people do not follow the law, um, the police hold us accountable, yet the police are not held accountable themselves. Let's take a step back for a second. We live in a republic. A republic is defined as a system of government where the people and their elective representatives hold the power. This book, I don't know if you can see it, I don't know if I'm on video, is the Arizona Revised Statutes, specifically Title 28. These laws are of, by, and for the people. So they are the people's laws. It's an absolute obligation for everyone, everyone, you, me, the police, everyone to follow these laws. It seems that uh, the police don't, the Phoenix police don't feel that these laws apply to them. I'm gonna give you a challenge tomorrow. Take 15 minutes and follow one of your fine police officers, your fine police officers, Phoenix police officers, and see if they follow these laws. I'm going to guarantee you they will not. Um, I posted a video of four of your officers on YouTube driving through Peoria, Glendale, and Phoenix at up to 20 miles an hour over the posted speed limit for, are you ready for this, 13 miles. I complained. Your Sergeant, Sergeant Wood told me that I was actually on, I was the wrong person for actually following them. Um, his supervisor, a Lieutenant told me that I was actually hundred percent correct, but he can't force his officers to obey the law. And this is kind of my problem. There's just no accountability in the Phoenix police department. Um, Shouldn't shouldn't the police be the mentors? Shouldn't they show us how to follow the law? That's my point. I appreciate your time. Thank you. 
Our next speaker is Gia Gaba, followed by April Hernandez. Gia, are you on the line? Gia is not on the line. Our next speaker is April Hernandez, followed by Ruby Hernandez. April, are you on the line? Uh, good afternoon, um, members of Phoenix City Council. My name is April Hernandez, and I have worked um, for HMS Host for four years as a barista. I am coming here today to voice my experience working as a barista at being at Starbucks at Phoenix Sky Harbor. We have been so short staffed this past year. It makes it more difficult um, when they have to quarantine um, people for no reason when they have a negative test result. So the more people who are out the unnecess for unnecessary quarantine, it makes it so much harder for um, other baristas to do the work alone. Um, before my shift, um, I cry because um, the stress I have accumulated throughout the, throughout the two years that we've been through this pandemic. And I don't, I don't even know like what my shift will look like. So that's a lot harder to keep, you know, a good face on. Um, I am coming here today to voice. I'm sorry. Um, so, <laughs> what is it going to take for Phoenix City Council to stand up, to stand with HMS host workers, and hold this company accountable for their inaction? Thank you. Our next speaker is Ruby Hernandez, followed by Rosa Hernandez. Ruby, are you on the line? Yes. Good afternoon, members of the Phoenix City Council. My name is Ruby Hernandez, and I have worked for HMS Host for some years now, and I've worked for um, Barista at Starbucks for six months now. I'm coming here today to voice my experience working as a barista at Starbucks at Phoenix Sky Harbor. I have personally experienced the understaffing while working multiple times throughout the shift with no manager, and I am expected to do things that are not even in my job description. And I've actually had management call police on me with no reason to why. And there's just so much discriminatory going on in the workplace, and it's, it's been addressed to HR, and nothing is being resolved or addressed. And it's happening not only just at you know, one store in the location is happening in multiple places and nothing is being addressed. And I'm here to ask you to stop supporting HMS Host um, workers and what it's going to take for Phoenix City Council to stand with HMS Host workers and hold this company accountable for their inaction. Our next speaker is Rosa Hernandez, followed by Vivian Lavely. Rosa, are you on the line? Rosa is not on the line. Our next speaker is Vivian Lavely, followed by Akila Mahumdi. Uh, Vivian, are you on the line? I am on the line. Hello, everyone. I hope everyone's having a great afternoon. You can hear me okay, right? Uh, yes, we can. Okay, great. Um, and some of you have heard me before. I'm Vivian Lavely. I work for HM Post and have been for eight and a half years. But I just want to thank the city council for all the hard work that we have done so far that I finally got recalled. I am back at my job as of May, which has been amazing to finally be back. Much like everyone else at the airport, though, I'm in the commissary. We are also running into the same issues with severe understaffing. We do most of the bulk production in our kitchen. It gets sent to the airport to be sent to our customers. And that is currently being done by nine people. They're going to be upgrading up to 10 people as of today, I believe it is. But we are severely understaffed still. At this point, the city of Phoenix has given HMS Host about $4.7 million in rent relief and other assistance, which has been great. But we still have not seen any form of pay increase in the past four years. So this is an issue that's been existing since before COVID. At this point, while I support, you know, still being able to continue to work, watching the company to continue to receive these benefits and everything while the workers are expected to do the work of 
four, five, six people. I mean, my position where I was before, we were run by 75 people. We're down to nine. And we are, you know, people haven't been able to take vacations that they have earned during this entire time. So I'm hoping that the city council can come together to assist us to where we can get to where we're able to support our families and continue to live both a happy life and one that's fulfilled with time with our family that we can take off because we have the coverage and the income to do so. Thank you very much. And again, thank you for all of your hard work that you have done with us in the past now for future endeavors. Have a great afternoon and congratulations to Jeff. Our next speaker is Akila Mahamdi, followed by Maria Ocampo. Akila, are you on the line? Akila is not on the line. Our next speaker is Maria Ocampo, followed by Josmar uh, Paita. Maria, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Uh, we can hear you. Good afternoon, members of the Phoenix City Council. My name is Maria Ocampo. My name is Maria Ocampo. Trabajo para HMS Host durante 32 años. And I've been working for HMS Host for 32 years. Como uh, lead? As a lead. Vengo aquí hoy para, para expresar mis experiencias de trabajo como burista y Starbucks en Phoenix Sky Harbor. And I come here to exp express my experiences uh, as a barista at Sky Harbor working at Starbucks. Que se necesitara para que el ayuntamiento de Phoenix apoye a los trabajadores de HMS Host y represent representando a esta empresa por sus insuficiencias. Este, me siento muy mal porque tenemos que trabajar ex, um, extra porque nos están mandando a cuarentena sin razón. O sea, no no puede haber una enfermedad más que el, el COVID-19 y pienso que no es justo por, porque hay mucha gente que no tiene COVID y, y nomás nos dicen tienes que descansar. Y aparte de eso, mi, yo pido apoyo al Consejo Municipal de Phoenix. No es justo que nos manden a descansar y no nos paguen. Porque hay mucha gente, no por mí, pero hay mucha gente que no tiene vacaciones. O sea, para mí es, no puedo creer que lo único que puede ser es COVID. Entonces, ¿dónde están las otras enfermedades de vacaciones? ¿O qué está pasando? Porque no es justo que todo el mundo vaya a descansar, pero no están pagando. O sea, por mí, para mí no, porque yo tengo vacaciones, pero hay mucha gente que está descansando y no les están pagando. Si no Señora, ¿puede, positivo, no puede pausar, por favor? Sí. Gracias. And so I come here to express uh, myself uh, the fact that uh, we need for the city council to support us. We, as the workers at HMS Host, uh, we need this representation from our city council members. I feel very bad, uh, the fact that uh, we're working so, so much time, extra time, and they put us in quarantine for no reason at all. With uh, COVID-19 uh, going on right now, right, right now, I just feel that it's not fair because a lot of people are, are being, uh, told to quarantine themselves and uh, they don't even have COVID. And so I asked the city council members uh, for support here, not for me, but the fact that uh, uh, I do have vacation time and they do, uh, there's other people that uh, they are being laid off, but they're not getting paid for this. So uh, where's these other disease? Why are they asking them to uh, be put in quarantine? Prosiga, señora. Es todo, necesitamos apoyo y no más que, o sea, no se me hace justo que la gente que esté descansando no estén pagando. O sea, hay otras compañías que están descansando. Si somos positivo o negativo, nos pagan. 
pero la compañía HMS Host no nos está pagando. Es todo. Muchas gracias. Gracias, señora. And so that's all I want to say. I just ask for the support from uh, the council members and let them know that it's not fair to be laying people off. Uh, other companies, uh, they do this and um, they pay uh, their people, but HMS, HMS host is not paying their pe people. Thank you. Our next speaker is uh, Joe's uh, Josmar uh, Paita, followed by Maria Rios. Josmar, are you on the line? Josmar is not on the line. Our next speaker is Maria Rios, followed by Sam Rivers. Maria, are you on the line? Sigue la señora Maria Rios. ¿Se encuentra en la línea? Sí, yo soy Maria Rios. Adelante, señora. Buenas tardes. Muy buenas tardes, miembros del Concilio de Phoenix. Mi nombre, como lo dije, es María Ríos y he trabajado para HMS Host por 17 años en la comisaría. Good afternoon, members of the Phoenix City Council. As I mentioned, my name is María Ríos, and I have worked for HMS Host for 17 years at the commissary. Me descansaron en marzo del, don, del 2020 cuando comenzó la pandemia y yo esperé más de un año para que me llamaran a regresar. Luché mucho durante este último año cuando perdí mi seguro mientras estaba en medio de un tratamiento del cáncer y me vi obligada a tomar una decisión muy difícil de pagar 700 dólares al mes para tener un seguro para mi esposo y para mí y poder seguir mi tratamiento de cáncer. También fue increíblemente desmoralizante para mí no tener suficiente dinero para pagar la hipoteca y mis otros biles. They laid me off in March 2020 when the pandemic started. I waited a year for them to call me back. I struggled this past year when I lost my insurance while in the middle of retaining or having cancer treatment. I was forced to make a difficult decision, pay $700 a month for insurance for myself and my husband, or not be able to treat my cancer. It was also incredibly demoralizing, not having enough money to pay my mortgage or to pay bills. Pido respetuosamente a que este consejo nos escuche y que diga a HMS Host que tiene que negociar un buen contrato con la Unión. I respectfully ask that this council listen to us and tell HMS Host that it must negotiate a good contract with the Union. <coughs> ¿Qué más necesitaría el concilio para que se una a los trabajadores de HMS Host? ¿Qué más necesitaría? Gracias por su tiempo. Gracias. What else is needed for the council to join in with us, HMS host workers? What else is needed? Thank you for your time. Our next speaker is Sam Rivers, followed by Jessica uh, Segundo. Sam, are you on the line? Sam is not on the line. Our next speaker is Jessica Segundo, followed by Victoria Stahl. Jessica, are you on the line? Jessica is not on the line. Our next speaker is Victoria Stahl, followed by Mateo Vargas. Victoria, are you on the line? I am. Yes, I am. Oh, uh, we can hear you, and you may proceed. Good afternoon, members of the Phoenix City Council. My name is Victoria Stahl. I've worked for HMS Host for about six months um, as a barista for Starbucks in Terminal 4. Um, as you've heard from many of my colleagues today, um, we are facing severe understaffing, um, and we deal with this day-to-day, -day, shift after shift. It's incredibly stressful and physically exhausting uh, to do our job because of understaffing. Um, while we are professionals at our job, it's, it's been overwhelming to try to meet the standards that Starbucks expects, um, while also trying to provide our passengers at the airport with the best possible service. We sometimes work longer than we're scheduled to. I myself have worked 
many late days. I've had many other coworkers who have had to work late hours or come in early or adjust their shifts in order to address the understaffing issues. Um, many of our coworkers have expressed that they can't handle the amount of stress that this job has put on them, um, especially during this pandemic, and many have left to go find other jobs elsewhere. Um, you know, these are just a number, a very small number of the reasons why I am respectfully asking the council to ask HMS hosts and to require HMS hosts to bargain as a good, a, a good contract with us workers and with our union. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Mateo Vargas. Mateo, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Uh, we can hear you and you may proceed. Good afternoon, members of the Phoenix City Council. My name is Mateo Vargas, and I've been working with HMS Host for going on six weeks now as a barista in the Starbucks at Terminal 3. For 15 months, the City of Phoenix has been providing HMS Host a waiver of their mini minimum annual guarantee, which has resulted in Host paying limited rent to the airport. I respectfully ask that the council does not provide any further release to HMS hosts until there's a place, a plan in place that benefits workers. These have been, this has been one of the most stressful jobs I have ever worked through constant understaffing, but the extremely high standards Starbucks expects, it, many workers are left unable to cope. There has not been a single day I have worked in the, my six weeks here that we have been sufficiently staffed. And on the days where we, finally achieve our minimum staffing, coworkers are sent to other stores that are also struggling, leaving us stripped. The amount of work and recipes to remember is far too much to run a store with only two employees, with working shifts as early as three in the morning. I respectfully ask the council to please stand with HMS host workers and requ require HMS hosts to work and bar work with us and bargain a fair union contract. The city has carried this corporation through the pandemic and enough is enough. We have seen none of this money and, excuse me, we have been coming to the council month after month asking you to support us. What is it going to take for the council to stand with HMS post workers? Thank you for your time. M Mayor, that was our final speaker. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us today. We are adjourned.